Welcome and greetings. This is the third of four mini lectures sponsored by the Loyola Marymount University Institute for Leadership Studies. I'm Michael Genovese, the director of the Institute. And uh, today we'll be talking about um, oral hygiene. We'll be talking about brushing and flossing. No, we won't. Um, today we're going to be talking about internships, their importance, and then some tips. Why are they important? You want to be well-rounded, you want to be experienced, you want to have a full liberal arts education. And part of that is to test yourself out there. Some people call it the real world, it never seemed very real to me. But uh, employers expect, even demand internships. Graduate students, if you want, if you want to be a graduate student, they, they want you to do internships. Uh, no matter where you go, internships are becoming the expectation, the norm, not the exception. When I was a student, they were the exception. Rare was the student who studied abroad or did an internship. But today, you almost have to. And so, many of you will have local internships in city government or with interest groups, etc. cetera. Um, but I wanna to talk to you about bigger, broader internship opportunities. Um, the Institute for Leadership Studies has a, a strong connection. We've had it for almost 30 years with the uh, the Washington Center in Washington, D.C. In fact, a number of years ago, we were named the outstanding university uh, um, for sending our students to study abroad in Washington. And our students did so well that we got the number one of about 45 universities in the, in the different rankings. I have the trophy in my office. Um, the Washington Center has been setting up internships for years and years, so they're incredibly well connected. And if you want to go to Washington for a fall, a spring, or a summer, that's the place to do it. That's especially true if you want to get into a career that's very difficult to enter into. It's a wonderful stepping stone for a career because uh, as much as I hate to say this, networking is important. Who you know is important. And so one of the great advantages of students going to Washington is that you get your foot in the door in a career that may be hard to get into. So you want to be a political consultant. You want to start doing making political commercials. Um, you can go to Washington in the fall or the spring or the summer, and you'll do a four day a week internship at a place that is a career preparatory position. You don't have to do a career job, you may just want to do it something that's fun or interesting. Uh, I had one student who wanted to be to work in the Washington DC Zoo. She was uh, the uh, she was the assistant to the director and had a great summer. Then it went on to law school. I'm not sure if those are connected, but um, internships cover an incredible range of options. Anything you can think about, there's an internship for it in Washington, you can do it. But if you do an internship, let's say as a political consultant, you do well, then when you go for a job interview, what's the first thing they ask you? Uh, what experience do you have? Well, uh, I internship in the second largest political consulting firm in, in America. This was my supervisor. Here's his email. He'd be happy to tell you about how great I did. It really matters. So if you want to open the door to a career, start up that ladder and if it's a hard opening act, this is a way to do, have an opening act. It's already there for you. Um, students uh, at the Washington Center, they take a course in the evening, so there's an academic component, and you intern four days a week. And being in DC really is a just, it's a great experience. Um, you know, summers especially, because it's a, a city full of interns. Uh, but especially for political science majors, if you're an IR major, work in the State Department, you could work in the Foreign Affairs Committee of, in Congress, you could work for an individual member who's a, an expert in the country that you find interesting. Uh, State Department, Justice Department, I mean, there are all kinds of opportunities. So think about uh, an internship in Washington, uh, but what are some tips and hints to being a good intern? I've often said that the three most important words an intern can learn and employ are, I'll do that. Your employer 
want someone who's a go-getter who will get things done and not a complainer. When, when they say we need this done, you be the first person to go, I'll do that. And before you know it, when they like you, they get to know you, they like your work, they start going to you and say, I've got a big project I want you to do. And when you do that and you do it well, then you'll get job offers. And when you, if you come back to LMU, you'll be able to have network better. You'll be able to say, here's the guy who will tell you what I did. Um, so I'll do that. Three most important words an intern can know. Second thing is low maintenance. Uh, your intern employer doesn't care about your personal problems, doesn't care that you know, you're, you're depressed or you're angry or you're lonely or you miss home or you miss your dog or you miss your boy or girlfriend. Don't bring your problems to work. Don't be a drag on your employer. Your employer should look at you and smile and think, what a great kid. You represent my institute. You represent my university. I want them to say, LMU gives us the very best interns I've ever had. And let me tell you why that's important. Almost 30 years ago, I became acquainted with a member of parliament named Graham Allen. And I found out that Graham Allen was a, a, a sponsor of two Hansard fellowships. That is to say, he took American students into his office in the fall and the spring as interns. The two he had were both from Notre Dame University. Okay, that's a good enough university. But as I got to know him better, I finally said, you know, Graham, we're a better university than Notre Dame. Why don't you give us one of the, one of the internships? Well, on the basis of our personal friendship, he did. About three years later, I said, Graham, tell me, you may be honest, who gives you better internships, LMU or Notre Dame? He goes, oh, by far, LMU. And I go, good, well then why don't you give me the other internship? He thought about it for a second, and he said, yeah, I said, okay. There's still a guy at Notre Dame, he actually retired uh, two years ago, who when I would see him at conferences, would give me the dirtiest looks. He was so pissed off because I stole his two internships. I was able to do that because of you and students. Because we selected good students, we sent great students, they did a great job, and they reflected well upon LMU. That's what your goal is, is to reflect very well on yourself, but also on your university. Um, so low maintenance, which is also linked to the it's not about you phenomenon. It's not about you, and not everything is about you. It's about your work at your internship. It's about you being a good worker. Um, and so again, don't bring your issues and don't bring your hangups into the office with you. Um, next, networking. Internships are great places for networking. And as much as I hate to say it, who you know is important. And so it's important to develop a good network of people that you know in various positions who know you, know your work, like you, like your work and respect you. So that when you need something, you can call and say, you know, I'm thinking of switching from this. I want to go back to DC. Do you know any? Oh yeah, I, I know a guy. Let me put him in touch with you. You want people to be anxious to help you. You would be amazed at how many people older than you, more experienced in the workforce, want to help. But you only want to help people who deserve being helped. Um, if someone likes you and respects you and admires your work, your work habits, and you ask them for a favor, they'll be happy to do it because they believe in that. That's how they got ahead and they'll help you get ahead that way. But you have to earn that. You have to earn it. Uh, you're not entitled to it. Finally, the last thing I'd say is a dress code. Uh, you don't go to work in jeans, cutoffs, t-shirt, flip-flops, you know that. But you're getting out into the real world, as unreal as it may be. And so start noticing how people who dress smartly are dressed. You know, not necessarily expensive. A blue blazer, invest in a good one. White and light blue shirts. Ties that are not wild and crazy. Um, dress professionally. Learn how to dress professionally. How do you do that? Watch TV, watch movies watch the news. Look at the people who look professional. You say, well, wait a minute, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. 
you're absolutely right, but we do. And you're being judged and you want people to think that you are capable, kind, caring, empathetic, sensitive, smart, a good worker. And part of the equation that they use to arrive at that is, do you look professional and presentable? How is your behavior? Are you polite? Um, I often say that the two greatest words, well, let me give you a backtrack. The greatest words in, in leadership, and I've told this to the president of the university, not the current one, but a couple of past ones. The most important things you can say in life are please, thank you, and you did a good job. If a leader has those words in their vocabulary and they use them, people will look at that leader with a really positive sense, positive attitude, and that's what you should be doing. Internships are important. They're part of the, the, the kind of the expectation that you ha that, that people have of you while you're in school. Pay attention, do them early, get good ones, and especially try to do one in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the fourth and last of our presentations on student leadership.